and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the stage, Phil Town. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh man, they, they should never do that to a veteran. That's not good. Now I'm having flashbacks. I can't even remember what I came up here for. <laughs> and we, I got it. Now I'm really on a whole different track. I don't know what I'm thinking except that it's just going, holy smoke. I, I got back from Vietnam in, uh, in uh, March 1972, and I was going through the Seattle airport, and some guy runs up and spits on me and runs away, all right? And I'm still looking for him, so I'm flashing back right now. I don't know. <laughs> If, I, I'll tell you this, this is how I got involved in investing. It's a weird, weird trip around the block, I'll tell you that. I, uh, I ended up with this big chip on my shoulder, which reminds me, by the way, we got a whole, be a, a whole bunch of people, our relatives, our, our, our friends, um, people that we know who are in the military, who are on the wall out there in places around the world, regardless of how you feel about politics. Would you do this just from an old Vietnam vet? When those guys come home, Stick your hand out and say thank you. Will you guys do that? Yeah. Because I tell you, man, it was kind of rough on, on, on my generation of vets. I mean, I, I dropped out. I went, I went down and I got a job as a guide working in the Grand Canyon. And, and I had this big attitude. And I grew my hair out real long, tried to be a hippie. Was no good at it whatsoever. But I did go around pretty good with a Harley and bars up about here, you know, and Scaring people, that worked out all right. And, and uh, I had a ball doing it. I was living in a teepee in Flagstaff, Arizona, and I was doing this for about 10 years. So I was like broke, basically. And, and uh, in 1980, I was assigned the lead guide on an outward bound trustees trip in the Grand Canyon. And I took these guys down in little paddle boats. Now, these are all the rich guys from outward bound. Um, outward bound, by the way, is that group that takes kids out into the wilderness for 30 or 45 days at a time. Are you familiar with this? 30 to 45 days at a time and tortures them. I don't know if you knew that, but they, they make them do all their own stuff. And, and so I figured I would make these guys do their own stuff. And now, they're, so they're on little boats and they're paddling the boats. So they got to do it all. These are like fat cats and they're paddling the boats. And we got them down the river. It's a two week trip. And about the end of the first week, we get to the biggest rapid on the river, which is called Crystal. And I, I, I'll tell you what it's like. The river flows at this time it, it, this is back in 1980, it was running 80,000 cubic feet per second. So this is a big river, okay? And, it was, and, and in this particular rapid, imagine the river goes straight ahead like this, hits a granite wall, turns that way, and drops 35 feet. And if you go over there, you're dead, all right? You're dying. So 40 trips down the Grand Canyon, I've never been anywhere near it. We always just row the boat, pull it in real tight to this corner, like right there, and just get around these big rocks and then pull into this eddy and catch the eddy and swing away from that big drop. And so these guys are in paddle boats, and on paddle boats you can't, I, I couldn't row it. I got to sit back and steer, so they provide all the power. And so we're sliding down the river. I say, okay, now here's what we're going to do. We're going to go down backwards, and when we get to that corner right over there, I want you guys, I'm going to turn the boat, and we're going to drive it right into that eddy. And they're all like, yeah, okay, and then, then we won't die. And they're, okay, good. And, and so, so we start down, and we get past the last rock. I say, now hit it, and they start paddling like this, and we still start going backwards. And I'm thinking, immediately I knew what happened. I hung the boat out into the rapid too far, okay? I, it was farther out than these guys could, could drive it. And so I start, you know, to, to get them motivated, right? At this point in time, I begin to scream at them as loud as I could, paddle, you morons. You know, and we're still going backwards. I, oh my gosh, we're going into this thing. So I swing the boat around. I think if we hit it straight, maybe only some of us will die and it won't be me. And I'm thinking, <laughs> and we go slamming up into this big wave. And, and at the top of the wave, it's totally like rats looking in a washing machine. And suddenly, these guys are motivated. <laughs> Boom. And, they, and I say, paddle forward, and they, they drive the boat right toward that big cliff. I didn't know what was going to happen. Just a big, huge wave coming off the cliff, and we hit that wave and stood up, and it took the boat all by itself and just swung it on the edge of this whirlpool around the edge of this big drop, and we hit this ramp of something on the other side, and we just slid down this thing, kind of like, and just, we didn't even get wet. <laughs> and we paddled over to the beach, and, you know, one of the guys got out of the boat and threw up, so I know he was pretty excited by the whole thing. And then this other guy goes out and gives me this big bear hug. He goes, you saved my life, man. And I said, 
Yes, I did. <laughs> I thought he was going to give me a big tip, you know. And uh, no, he said, you know, uh, I, I, I really owe you, man. And, uh, and I'm not going to give you any money. Instead, I'm going to teach you something. And, you know, immediately I started feeling pretty disappointed by the whole thing. And, and he's like, uh, you know, I'm going to teach you to invest. And then I started feeling really disappointed by it because I have no what? No money. Okay. He goes, hey, you, you know, you feed a man a fish, you fed him for a day. You, 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 but you teach a man to fish, you fed him for a lifetime, which I didn't even begin to comprehend at all. What is he talking about? Except that he wanted to teach me to invest and I have no money. But for a week, he worked on me and said, come out to my house in La Jolla, California, and I'll, and I'll teach you and all this. And I just ignored it. And three months later, I'd completely forgotten about it until it got very cold. And I'm freezing my little thing off. And, and I, I, I'm thinking, dang, didn't that guy tell me I could come out to La Jolla, California, where it's nice and warm? <laughs> and so I did. I went out there, and I hung out with him for about two weeks, and then for some reason, I just got bit by the bug, and I thought, I could do this. And so I apprenticed to him. You know, apprenticeship, right? You sweep the floors, and you just mop the place out, and you look over his shoulder once in a while, and gradually, they start to give you a little more to do. And I did that for a full year, probably worth 50, 60,000 bucks. If, you know, at the time, I might have gotten a job or something. So I did that full time, just kept the belt tight and hung in there. And, uh, and then after a year, I went on my own with about 1,000 bucks, and five years later, I had 1.45 million. Is that pretty good? Yeah, I thought that was pretty good. Rock on, baby. I said, yeah. All right, so I got to tell you, the guy that was teaching me was a guy that learned from, uh, from a guy you may have heard of named Warren Buffett. You guys familiar with him?